how many people here are first years? Okay, second years? Third years? All right, any fourth years? All right, awesome, okay, we've got a good mix. So I'm Darnell, thank you so much for that intro, that was great. Uh, and I am gonna give you a short talk today about four things that I think you should know. To give you some more context, 15 years ago I was in your seat. And um, I am a first generation college student as well. Uh, my mom is from Mexico, Guanajuato to be exact. Uh, yeah, and um, she uh, came to this country through a church program and she liked it so much she decided to stay. And she met my dad when she was in high school and um, they, oh, I'll let you fix that. And so they always raised my sister and I uh, with a mindset of, the importance of a four-year degree because they never got a four-year education. But coming into Davis as an undergrad, there were a lot of challenges. Basically, I didn't have the same level of guidance that a lot of other students had. And uh, looking back on it now, there are some things that I really wish somebody would have been able to tell me that had the experience that I've now had in the business world and the success that I've had. So I'm gonna give you some tools and I'm gonna quickly also put this up here on the screen as well. This is my email address. So what I'm about to walk you through are frameworks for how you should approach these four things that I'm gonna talk about today. If you want these slides, just email me after today. It's real easy, darnell at yelp.com. I'm gonna send you the slides. The slides also have links in them as well as videos, which are resources for you, okay? So darnell at yelp.com. I'll let you take a picture of that as well. And um, one thing that uh, I learned today just by talking to some folks around the campus is 70% of you are gonna change your major. Uh, by the time you graduate, right? Just by show of hands, who here has a really good vision for where they see themselves in five years? One person, all right, that's awesome. What, what, what's your vision? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, I want to be a labor delivery nurse. A labor delivery nurse, all right. That's very cool, that's really cool. So, you know, a lot, some people do have a very clear vision and they stick with that. In a lot of other cases, people end up changing their mind and deciding to go in lots of different directions while they're here on campus and even after you graduate and that's totally fine. Here's what my journey looked like after school and I'll walk you through this real quick. So, 2006, I was ASU CD president. I swore that I was gonna be the next president of the United States. Well, I had to wait in line after Khalif Asagai back there in the room who was my ACC president when I was vice president and I stepped into his shoes and ran for president the next year. Um, but things really changed for me when I worked on an actual political campaign and I was like, you know what? Politicians kind of suck. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I really like this person, if I can really relate to them. I'm just like a registered Democrat, so I'm supporting this person. Um, so I realized that, oh, and the other big thing was most people had to go to law school to become a politician, or at least that's what I was told in a lot of my poli-sci classes, right? At that point, I couldn't afford law school, so I decided to make a change. And uh, at that point in the world, the stock market was very hot. And I said to myself, you know what? I've got a ton of debt from student loans. I wanna pay this debt off as soon as possible. I'm gonna teach myself how to be a stockbroker. What did I know about stocks? as a poli-sci major in African American Studies minor. Nothing, but I taught myself, I got licensed, and I ended up getting a job at Merrill Lynch uh, via an internship. That internship and job turned into a job at a big time investment bank in San Francisco, but if everybody knows their history, what happened in 2007? The stock market crashed, the housing market, so whoever said housing market, that was the most accurate thing that happened, yes, the housing market crashed, but it created this whole tidal wave of other events, the stock market crashed alongside with it. And so here I was a few years into my work life after college and I needed to make another career change. Um, I was working at an investment bank in San Francisco and at that point Yelp, which was still very much a startup, was just down the street. And I would always see the Yelp kids at the bar after work and me and my investment banker friends were all miserable drinking whiskey and we'd see the Yelp kids and they were so, you ever see people that are so happy it annoys you? <laughs> that was the Yelp kids. I was like, who are these Care Bears? Like high-fiving, they're super happy with their red track jackets. Um, and it turned out that I knew one of the, the folks in that group, her name was Brianna and I'd been in ASUCD with her here at Davis and she said, you know what, you should actually apply for a role at Yelp. You're not gonna make as much as you make in banking, but it's a really good opportunity. The company's really growing, especially in the midst of a recession. And so I decided to take a risk, made a career change, and I ended up 
in the right place at the right time because in 2012 what happened here is Yelp IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. That's me in my red track jacket, now a happy Care Bear clapping <laughs> and fist pumping. Um, and I've been at Yelp for nearly a decade. What I do today is I work with businesses all across the country helping businesses be more successful in the social media landscape as it exists today. And here we are ringing the bell on the New York Stock Exchange a second time in partnership with the U.S. Small Business Administration. So um, with that, enough about me. Let's talk about you and let's talk about some tools that you can use after today. Um, and so I want to start off with this. Every one of us wants to achieve something great in our lifetime and every one of us can with the right tools. So these are four things that I hope that you'll be able to implement in your life today as students, but also in your professional life after you graduate. So the first thing is you need to have a growth mindset. Has anyone heard this before? Growth mindset? Okay, I see some head nods. Yes, okay. Uh, so for folks who are less familiar with it, uh, there's an entire framework. Um, it's put together by Carol Dweck, who's uh, at Stanford. And so I'm going to break it down for you, side by side comparison of what it means to have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. I'll give you one example, though. Sometimes people will say something like, you know what, so and so is naturally smart. So does that mean that people that are not naturally smart are incapable of doing things? No. Not at all, right? Uh, or somebody might say, you know what, as a personal thing, I'm not really good at math, so therefore I shouldn't do anything related to math because I'm just going to fail, right? And that's the absolute wrong mindset to have. That is what we call a fixed mindset. So if you have a growth mindset, you believe that skills can be grown and developed. I mean, look at me. Again, poli-sci major, African-American studies minor. I ended up getting licensed with my Series 7 and 66 within 12 months of graduating from Davis, right? So it wasn't a skill that I had, but I acquired that skill by teaching myself. Um, another thing is when it comes to learning, you think of learning as a process versus how you look. Um, maybe a more specific example here, and uh, there are some other ones that mention this further down, is sometimes you may be afraid to raise your hand in class because you don't want to look dumb, right? Uh, the professor's like, who knows the answer to this? And maybe you know the answer, but maybe you don't, so you just, nah. right? Um, people believe, people that have a growth mindset uh, know that it is okay uh, to give effort, and it's also okay to make mistakes. Um, it's also important if you are faced with challenges to make sure that you're consistently persevering and working through those challenges instead of checking out or giving up, right? Feedback is also really important. Um, who here asks for feedback from either their professors or other mentors on a regular basis? Okay, only, only a few people. Everyone in here should ask for feedback consistently. One thing that is proven uh, in general psychology is we all have a blind spot, meaning that there are ways that we perceive ourselves, or there are things about ourselves that we are just completely unaware of that other people around us see and observe. So always ask for feedback, and especially when it comes to the classroom. And then also, um, this is what I was alluding to earlier, mistakes are A-OK. -okay. In fact, everybody in here is human, everybody's going to make a mistake at some point. And also, everybody here is gonna fail at some point as well. Um, when I was a freshman, I could not afford to live here on campus, so I lived with my parents in Sacramento, California, and I drove to school every day. Uh, and I also worked 20 hours a week at a grocery store. Uh, I almost failed out of college my first year because I was not setting myself up for success. But I looked at that as a moment for me to make a pivot, and I did, and of course, the rest is history. Um, failure is okay, it does happen, and if it does, you shouldn't give up. You should continue to put effort in and persevere. But the easiest way to remember this of having a growth mindset is the power of yet, right? So it's as simple as, hey, are you good at math? No, not yet. Hey, do you know how to trade stocks in the stock market? No, not yet. I can learn, right? This is a link to the TED Talk that Carol Dweck um, has done that really breaks down having a growth mindset. And so the link to this TED Talk is here, and I encourage all of you to watch it. So again, um, if you want these slides, email me at darnellyelp.com, and you'll have access to this. Okay, so having a growth mindset. Thing number two is you need to control your physiology. Who here knows why your heart beats fast when you're afraid? All right, okay. Adrenaline. Adrenaline, okay, yeah. So your fight or flight instinct is kicking in when you get afraid. That's why your heart race is fast. Who here has a fear of public speaking? I, I actually used to hate public speaking. I do it all the time now. When you get up in front of a, a crowd, your fight or flight instinct kicks in. That's just your natural physiology. It happens, right? 
what literally your body is doing, and sometimes you see people, their handshake when they're presenting, uh, is because your body is sending all of the blood into the core of your body. It's a defense mechanism trying to protect your vital organs, right? So if you know that, then you can control it, right? I don't need to have shaky hands up here because I already know what my body is doing. You can literally make fists behind your, behind your back to alternate your blood flow, control your breathing, and you're controlling your physiology. That's just one example, but I wanna give you a more specific application as it relates to the professional world. Okay, so there's this concept called the happy warrior. Uh, Amy Cuddy is a Harvard social psychologist. She's also uh, the one who did the, probably I think it's the most famous TED talk about power posing, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Um, but she talks about this concept called happy warrior as it relates to leadership. And so I'll just read this off slide for you. When we judge others, especially our leaders, we look first at two characteristics, how lovable they are, their warmth, communion, or trustworthiness, and how fearsome they are, their strength, agency, or competence. Uh, and there is some disagreement about the proper labels for the traits, but researchers agree that they are the two primary uh, dimensions for social judgment, right? So that means that if you are somebody who is trying to have success in the business world, for example, you need to demonstrate both of these things in the right amount. You need to be warm, but also strong at the same time. And you are more likely to be perceived as a leader if you're able to master that. Um, so these are some specific things that I tell all the folks who work for me. Um, and this is how you really achieve the combination of warmth and strength, right? So it's really, uh, it's actually the thing that uh, is judged before competence too, which they talk about in this article, which you have a link to as well. Um, and basically what they find is that judgments of trustworthiness generally lead to significantly higher economic gains. Um, so that last bullet point there, a really easy way to do that is to make sure that you're smiling, making good eye contact, and being genuinely interested in the person that you're talking to. Who here knows the number one thing that people love talking about? Themselves. Themselves, right? Okay. So seriously. So if you are um, you know, really wanting to beef up your people skills, the easiest thing to do is start asking questions when you're in conversation with people. And people will open up to you like a book. All right? Um, but don't forget strength. Uh, one thing that I have here is always study the subject matter at hand very well so you can always answer all questions with confidence. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the importance of reading. Uh, but if you are well read, it will really make a world of difference once you get out there into the real world, so to speak. So I am a big proponent of reading. Um, and also practice your power poses. So studies show that literally holding open poses make you perform better. So this is a, a link to Amy Cuddy's TED talk about power posing that I want all of you to watch. But I'll basically just kind of explain the, the basic concept to you, right? If you are getting ready to go in for a job interview, if you're sitting there in the waiting room and you're on your phone and you, you got your arms crossed, you're just looking down at your phone, you might perform worse than somebody who is literally standing there, arms open, confidently waiting to go in for that interview. Why? Because you are changing your physiology. When you do this, when you close your body off, you are literally telling your brain that you're going into defensive mode, right? When you open yourself up, you are literally telling your, your brain, I'm ready. And it is amazing how you can hack the human mind. And so I really encourage you all to check out this uh, TED talk about power posing. Okay, so thing number three. You need to be able to coach yourself. What do I mean by this? You need to be able to make high quality decisions and you can't always ask a friend or you know, get advice from somebody because also some of the times you may be in a situation that's very unique to you. So I wanna give you this framework. It's called the soon funnel, okay? And so this is something that uh, we teach leaders at my company and I've also gotten from other leaders from around um, around the tech industry, Life Labs Learning literally surveyed thousands upon thousands of leaders in the tech industry and they asked, what are some of the traits that make people really good at leadership? And high quality decision making is one of the top things. So this is literally a framework for how you can make high quality decisions. It's called the SOON Funnel. SOON is an acronym, it stands for Success, Obstacles, Options, and Next Steps, right? Okay, so who has something that maybe they are dealing with, like a project, a goal, Anything that they don't mind sharing with the group? Yes? Um, I'm planning to get on the team list by the end of this quarter. Okay. All right. So your goal 
is getting on the dean's list by the end of the quarter. That, by the way, is also a very great goal because it is very specific and he's given himself a timeline, right? So you definitely want to set goals that are set up in that way. So what are your, what are your obstacles? What's preventing you from doing that? Um, just time management that I have to handle the homework, um, extracurricular activities, and that I'm trying to get involved. Okay, got it. So I'm hearing he's got some time constraints. He's got homework. You, you said you're in a fraternity as well? Rushing. Oh, sorry, you're rushing a fraternity? Okay, don't drink too much. Uh, oh, okay, got it. All right, not like that, all right. Um, okay, so then what are your options? Just either staying home with my studies or going to the library and doing homework and then Got it. Got it. And one of those options could maybe prevent you from achieving success, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think your next step should be? <laughs> okay. Fair enough. But seriously, if you literally think through everything that you're trying to to um, achieve in terms of goals in this way, it will consistently help you make high quality decisions. And this is the same framework that leaders around the tech industry are using today, okay? So the soon funnel, remember that. Um, there's a link to an article here also about high quality decision making as well that I encourage you to check out. Because if you click on that, you'll have access to this article as well. Yes? So if you go back to more time, you have a question. So when yeah. you get to the next step, does it start over again or is it just one. Yeah, so, so sometimes the, the obstacle or the goal might be really complex. So you might actually need to break your goal up into chunks or phases and then apply this at every phase of the goal, right? Sometimes your goal may be very simple and straightforward and you only need to do this once, right? But if you're able to apply this framework, you are gonna start to make really high quality decisions and uh, consistency is key here. Okay, final thing. Don't stop reading. This may sound like a no-brainer on a college campus, but I don't know about you, when I graduated, I was like, I'm never looking at a book again. I'm done, peace. <laughs> Here's the thing though. What I quickly learned is leaders are readers. Um, I've talked to so many C-level executives, people on boards for tech companies, venture capitalists. One consistent thing about all these people is they're reading like a book a week. It's crazy. I'm like, how do you have time for that? Um, one also, one quick trick is you can also listen to books too if you don't have the time to read. Um, I like to be old school and I like the paper feel in my hands, but that's me. These are some specific books that I'm calling out here though that are on um, my reading list. My CEO uh, is a big proponent of all these books as well. And so I wanted to specifically call these out as things that I would encourage you to check out as well. I would start with this one, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I promise you really good people skills are going to be a thing that is going to propel you in the professional world once you get out of college. Uh, you need to be really strong in the classroom, but you also need to have really strong people skills as well because your network will have a big impact on where you ultimately end up in the same way that it did for me. So key takeaway, if you can, try to read or listen to one nonfiction book per month. and. Uh, for fun, I've got a TEDx talk here about how to be a speed reader, literally how to read a book a day, uh, by Jordan Harry, if you wanna check that out. Okay, so these are your new tools. Just to recap that, the power of yet, happy warrior mindset and power posing, the soon funnel for high quality decision making, and speed reading and audiobooks on Audible at one and a half times speed. Seriously? <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, maybe it's just me, I can process information that fast, but if I put on one and a half times speed, I can still get like what they're talking about and it helps you get through the book even faster. All right, so one final thing, if for the fourth years out there, if anybody's interested, if anybody is on the job hunt, you can go to yelp.com slash careers. We are constantly growing. Uh, so if you're interested, feel free to click on that link. And with that, I will open it up to questions if anyone has any. Oh, and you can clap. I hope this is informative.